Uh, let, let me just start out by saying I, I'm Burrow Ellis, CEO of DeKalb County, and uh, I'm joined by a number of uh, uh, significant partners who uh, I will introduce momentarily. But let me just start off by saying that in the middle of some of the uh, most difficult economic times that we've seen uh, as a community, as a people, as a nation, and of course around the globe, uh, we're bringing a series of initiatives right here at home, locally, right here in DeKalb County um, that is uh, designed to bring good news, uh, to uplift the spirits of our people, uh, to provide relief uh, to these crises. Uh, let me uh, remind everyone that just last week we announced an initiative where we're converting landfill gas into fuel for our automobiles. And next week we're going to have a major jobs announcement. Uh, but the issue of today is housing. And uh, we're excited, I'm excited personally to make this announcement about a unique opportunity to address the foreclosure crisis by providing quality and affordable homes to our hometown heroes. One DeKalb Lives encompasses several major housing initiatives that DeKalb County has undertaken to proactively combat the housing and foreclosure crisis that is devastating so many families, neighborhoods, and communities. This foreclosure crisis and loss of jobs are interconnected and have impacted the global economy, not just our economy locally. Uh, next week, as I mentioned, I'll be making another major jobs announcement, uh, and that'll be DeKalb County's answer to that crisis. But today, I'm excited to provide good news about housing for these hometown heroes, many of whom you see standing with us today. As many of you know, there are a number of programs that are already underway under our One DeKalb's Lives initiative, including our first-time home buyers down payment assistance program where working families can receive up to $8,000 to use for down payment assistance on a home. Over the last three years, 286 families have utilized the program and have become first-time homeowners in DeKalb County. Our neighborhood stabilization program where foreclosed homes are being renovated and put back on the market. Our Get Home Now program, which in partnership with APD Solutions and their CEO, Vaughn Irons, who's joining us today. Vaughn, where are you? Just wave so everybody can see you. Vaughn's here, and you're going to be hearing from him uh, shortly. Provides quality, affordable housing to veterans and working families who might otherwise find it difficult to purchase a home in this turbulent economy. And we're here today to unveil the latest tool in our One DeKalb Lives toolbox, the Good Neighbor Next Door program. Starting right now, our Good Neighbor Next Door program will ensure that as many FHA foreclosures as possible are acquired by teachers, police officers, firefighters, and other public safety officials. We're very happy that HUD has approved an expanded geographical area, including this neighborhood that we sit in right now. And I don't know about you, but how many people would love to live in a home in this neighborhood. Raise your hand if you love to live in a home in this neighborhood. You know, we've already got some good neighbors in this neighborhood. Uh, Commissioner Sharon Barnes Sutton, where do you live? What neighborhood? I live in this neighborhood. You live in this neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. We have our school board chair, Tom Bowen. What neighborhood do you live in? I live in this neighborhood. And we also have the CEO of DeKalb County, and he lives right here in this neighborhood, <laughs> too. So let, let me tell you, the, this is just uh, typical of the type of homes that are being available. And because of the, the, the program and the expanded geographical area that's been approved by HUD, and you'll hear from a minute, a minute from our, our regional HUD administrator, Ed Jennings, who's right here to my right, a very good partner in Washington, and it, it helps to have good partners in order to be able to do programs right here. But our eligible first responders and teachers can receive a 50% discount on foreclosed FHA homes, 50% discount. Now, to show you the power of this program and how it will help to stabilize and sustain neighborhoods, we're here at the home of one of the homes that was actually purchased under our One DeKalb Lives initiative. This is the home of Officer Bernadette Hooker. Where's Officer Hooker? Come on, come on up in front, Officer Hooker. Stand right here with me. This is not a prop home. This is Officer Hooker's home. 
The home purchased by Officer Hooker was uh, acquired through our One Decab Lives initiative. The Good Neighbor Next Door program will give us an additional options, even greater power, to make sure that any foreclosed properties in this area are acquired by good neighbors like Officer Bernadette Hooker. Uh, to highlight the importance of this program, I want to first uh, bring up our Regional Administrator for HUD, Ed Jennings. Now, get ready because I'm just preventing, presenting you the overview, but nobody can deliver it and bring it on home like Ed Jennings. <laughs> Ed, we appreciate the partnership that we have with HUD and the good work that you're doing. So I want to ask you to come up now and bring some remarks. Thank, Thank you, sir. my friend. First of all, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to uh, be here in DeKalb County again, 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 because leadership uh, Burr Ellis and the county commission, uh, the elected officials in this community have really, really addressed the economic crisis in a whole new and different way on the ground. Uh, the president has laid out a broad strategy from Washington with the behest of Secretary Sean Donovan, but right here on the ground, uh, the leadership is really getting it right. This is now my third or fourth time uh, out here in DeKalb County talking about new initiatives. As a matter of fact, it's my fourth time in my 18 months talking about new initiatives that DeKalb has been doing uh, that have been beneficial uh, to the community. I've got to start off by saying and it would only be appropriate because we're having such a challenging uh, season that last Saturday there was a little game in Jacksonville. And uh, I have to bow my head uh, to those Bulldogs who won and beat the lovely, fabulous Gators uh, <laughs> last Saturday. And I just, you know, when you win every once a decade, I have to give you a little love. So I guess that's, that's only appropriate. But that's not why we're here. That's not why we're here today. That's not why we're here. It's got a little difference, of course, with local politics. Uh, the idea that since this administration took office in January 20th, 2009, 5.1, 5.1 million Americans have had modifications of their mortgages. Now, you don't hear that often, 5.1. So 1 million of those have FHA mortgages. That's this administration, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, working with the private sector to make sure families could begin to address the most challenging economic crisis uh, truly, truly in over half a century. It's a big, big deal. Uh, through those laws made efforts, uh, families have saved some $525 per month. That's $6,000 uh, per family. That money goes into the community. That money goes into local restaurants. That money goes uh, for down payment assistance. That money uh, can go uh, for health care access. That money fuels the economy. And because, and because of that great effort, we have more and more things to talk about. You heard CEO Ellis talk about the NSP program. In this particular home, this particular home, Officer Hooker was able to receive a $25,000 soft second that was enabled to her to get a low interest loan for the acquisition of this home. Uh, you heard about all the great people that live in this neighborhood, the council, the school board uh, chair, you talked about the CEO. All that's great when you got the high, high, big muckety mucks living in a neighborhood <laughs> like this. But you need those folks right on the ground. Those folks who are putting their life on the line each and every day. See, you, you feel safe when you live next to, next to uh, C.O. Ellis, but you feel even safer when Officer Hooker walks out in that uniform. <laughs> She's carrying that gun. They say, oh, okay, now. Now everything's squared away. Everybody's good now. Everybody's squared away. And we want to see uh, dozens, hundreds of more families throughout the country have this opportunity. You see, because of the great leadership of uh, C.O. Ellis and his commission and Ms. Morris and his staff, they came to uh, our staff, I've got here with me, please raise your hand, uh, Deputy Regional Administrator Karen Jackson Sims, uh, Ms. Deborah Robinson, and Mr. Ralph Jackson on our staff. And they approached us and said, you know, we've got a challenge here. We want to go even further than the normal uh, confines. We want to expand the areas because we want to bring our nation's finest, those living right here in the cab, to this community, giving them a quality place to live so they can raise their sons and daughters, but also serve as role models for other families. You see, when you've got Officer Hooker here and you've got her colleagues, other firefighters, I know my mom's a, a school teacher, my wife's a school teacher, and I know those are the folks who really set the standard for a community. When they come here and they come to this community, then they're role models. They can say what should and should happen, not only on the law and legal issues, they can make sure you get your homework done. 
Uh, they make sure things are squared away in this community. So when you see this fire truck right here and you see those folks in uniform, those first responders, that's what this is all about. And because of the great success, because of the great success of this program, the president at, at the behest, again, of Secretary Sean Donovan has said, you know, NSP 1, 2, and 3 have worked well. We need another shot in the arm. We need Project Rebuild. We need Project Rebuild. See, NSP 1, 2, and 3 was a total of some $7 billion throughout the country that HUD managed you. We talked about some $18.5 million that came right down here to DeKalb County that the leadership has been used wisely and has been using very aggressively. Uh, but that's not enough. Uh, this country cannot wait to be able to hire and support more teachers. Some 400,000 teachers will be a part of the American Jobs Act having more firefighters and, respond and responders, hiring more of them in challenging budget times. That uh, $400 billion plus proposal is one that's going to incentivize and support communities right now, right now. And a major piece of the American Jobs Act, American P a very good piece of the American Jobs Act is called Project Rebuild where there's $15 billion, $15 billion. That's twice as much as NSP 1, 2, and 3 were. Because NSP 1, 2, and 3, we expect to be able to uh, touch some 95,000 units, uh, create some 90,000 jobs. That's NSP 1, 2, and 3. And we're doing that right here in the cab. But Project Rebuild, Project Rebuild would create some 200,000 jobs wow. right now. Right now. Right here. Right here in the state of Georgia and prevent some 13,000 layoffs. Uh, right here, we cannot afford to wait till November of next, next year when there's something that happens, and I believe in the month of November. We're not worried about that. We need, as former Dr. King, and I'm wearing his pen today because he talked about many years ago the fierce urgency of now. now. We cannot afford to wait. We need more officer hookers. They're waiting. They're waiting for opportunities to invest them and their families in communities just like this neighborhood. There are firefighters that are waiting in a situation where there are challenging issues and APS and other school systems around this area, these people need to stabilize themselves with a good place to live. I will tell you, President Barack Obama, Secretary Sean Donovan are committed to Project Rebuild because the economic impact it will have on this country, on this region, on the state of Georgia, and right here with the leadership of CEO Burl Ellis and the commissioners and the staff here, we can have an impact right here in DeKalb County. So to Officer Hooker, we know that all of us talk a lot. We do that pretty well. Uh, we talk about what may happen, but we know at 11 o'clock at night, at 3 o'clock in the morning, on a Saturday evening, we've got people like you who are defending us against those who are looking to attack us. We are so proud to give you just some small, very small support for you and your family, for what you can do, what you and your colleagues can do. And since Mr. Ellis won't give me a house out here, uh, we'll just save those houses uh, for some more of your colleagues, some more of these firefighters that are doing God's work. On behalf of the, the Obama administration, on behalf of Secretary Sean Donovan, uh, on behalf of my HUD team, we're so proud to be a consistent, continued partner with a team of innovative leadership that we see here in DeKalb County. Thank you very much. And I understand that uh, Ed may have to uh, step out. But let me uh, personally thank President Obama and, and HUD Secretary Donovan and, and, and Regional Administrator Ed Jennings uh, for their partnership, for their support. They understand that we can't wait, that working families need relief right now. And the message I want you to take back to the Secretary and to the President, if you would, Ed, is that here in DeKalb County, we are initiating those local, those locally, those programs that through the funds and the programs that you're making available, uh, that we're being innovative, that we're advancing the ball, that we're putting citizens back to work through our One to Cabs Works initiative, that we're providing housing for first responders through our One to Cab Lives in initiative, and that we are creating opportunity because the foundation is being laid. When, it's, when the story is told over the last three years, we will have built or renovated eight new libraries and two new rec centers and worked in partnership with the YMCA to bring a YMCA 
right down the street to an underserved community. We will have renovated major thoroughfares such as Beaufort Highway and, and Candle Road and Memorial Drive. And we will have upgraded an aging, what was once an aging water and sewer system to ensure that the next generation of DeKalb Countyans have the quality of life that we all embrace this community for in the first place. So that's what we're about, and that's how we're advancing the ball, and that's how we're moving forward. I want to make sure that I introduce all of our elected officials. I recognize Commissioner Sharon Barnes Sutton, who's to my immediate left. Let's give Commissioner a round of applause. Our school board chair, Tom Bowen. Let's give the school board chairman. Our school board member, Donna Edler, is here. School board member. You may want to know why they're here, because this is about partnership. This is providing opportunities not just for anyone, but for our teachers, for our first responders. And that's why they've come to join us here today. There's another partnership that I'm very grateful and very proud of. You may be asking, well, where's the money coming from? How are we going to provide these discounted mortgages, 50% discounted mortgages, to move families back in here? Well, we've got to have a strong private sector partner. And I've been teasing this up over the last few days talking about how we're bringing a significant partner to the table, a name you know, and as I said on the radio this morning, trust, okay, a name that's been here long term in the community. And so I'm honored today to say that this all got off the ground because I received a phone call from Jim Young, President and CEO of Citizens Trust Bank, who said we've got an innovative program and opportunity, and he lives right here in the Cab County, I want, to, I want you to tell us about what neighborhood you live in, Jim. And uh, he, which one? He said he lives in this neighborhood. <laughs> How about that? And, and because of the partnership with Citizens Trust Bank, we're able to offer this good neighbor next door program. Because of the partnership with Housing and Urban Development, because of the partnership with ABPD Solutions, it's because of partnership and with the school board. That's why we're here advancing the ball for the Cab Countyans. Let me bring forward right now President and CEO of Citizens Trust Bank, Mr. Jim Young. Jim. Thank you, Mr. Ellis, and good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. We don't do weather, but I wish we did. Uh, we're grateful to be here. You know, there are probably 80 fewer banks in Georgia than there was in 2008. And I'm sure there are plenty of naysayers that said the first of those to go would be Citizens Trust Bank, but we've been around since 1921 doing what bankers ought to be doing, using the community's money for the community's benefit. Uh, yes, I was concerned as we began to see the rapid rise in foreclosures and the heartbreaks among those who have, in some cases, lived for years in homes that they could no longer afford, primarily because uh, they had been granted mortgages that they did not understand. It was never the territory of Citizens Trust Bank to engage in subprime lending. It didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense for my neighbors. I am a neighbor here. I moved here in 1994. I knew Burrow when he was an attorney and I couldn't get free legal advice from him. <laughs> but he's become a great CEO and I'm very proud of him. Uh, not only am I a neighbor, my executive assistant lives just around the corner here. Fred Daniels, who is my chief credit officer, and also a member of the MARTA board, is also a neighbor here. And so it is a fine community. You know, sometimes when there are problems, and particularly problems that rage throughout our economy, that causes misfortune for others, it represents opportunities for others. Our dilemma was how to get money advanced at a rate that would allow for the continuing decline in valuation. We had money in the vault and still have money in the vault. Don't let anybody tell you that banks are not lending. That's simply not true. We're not lending under the old way they used to lend, but we're lending. 
And that's good for DeKalb County. It's good for America. I've looked at the program and, and I talked to Burrow and we met in his office. It was, well, this makes a lot of sense. And I was tempted, if you're going to give a 50% discount, to change my profession and <laughs> <laughs> look for another half in this neighborhood. But in any event, <clears throat> we're doing simply what we've always done. Uh, sometimes people tell you that politics is all local. Uh, sometimes economic solutions are local. If we are willing to talk with each other, willing to sit down with each other, so it's very important, <clears throat> this program. The other thing I want to mention, to mention is that if you don't find a house in, in a neighborhood like this, uh, there are several other neighborhoods that qualify. Uh, we're lending, making mortgages at as low as $25,000. So it's a great opportunity to become a homeowner. I don't think there's another bank in the city or the region that will talk to you about a mortgage of $25,000, and yet you can buy a very, very nice home in that price range. We want to see people take advantage of this opportunity, and we're here to help. If we mortgage your property, you'll not have to worry about robo-signing and where was my mortgage sold, and in what investment package as a mortgage-backed security it is. Your mortgage will be held locally. You've got a problem with the payment, you've got a problem with the escrow, and you can call me. You call me on lesser matters anyhow, but you can call me. It's local, I want to keep it local. There's no need to sell these mortgages and send them halfway around the world and then you don't know when it's time to talk to your mortgage holder who to get in touch with. That is the value of a community bank. We're going to fund it locally. We'll keep it locally. Uh, we're interested in talking to all of those who have the ability to take advantage of this significant opportunity. And it is significant. If HUD is going to work with you to allow for HUD properties at a 50% discount of price, at a 50% discount of the listed price, when that property most likely has already been written down, it's very, very difficult, very, very difficult to make that a bad investment. And particularly in an area where this is a good place to raise your children. I've raised four children here, all out now and doing well. And pardon me, the shameless plug, two of them are now on Amazing Race on every Sunday night at <laughs> <laughs> whenever the uh, 60 minutes end because of the football game. But uh, check in on this. Six episodes in, they're still oh. in. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not why we're here. But that's not, <laughs> but that's not why we're here. <laughs> except they would kill me if I didn't mention this. So you uh, look at that and root for Justin and Jennifer for me. Right. In the meantime, as we always have been, uh, we are a bank that has its root in DeKalb County. We're a local bank. And many people have forgotten what that was. When they talk about Wall Street Bank and mainstream banks, and then there are banks like CTB, people you can call and talk to someone human, the president who will answer the phone on the first ring, and you have access to me. I often say I meet with anybody, I only have one criteria is that they be unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I will meet with you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a rare opportunity not an opportunity brought to you by one individual, not an opportunity brought to you by one institution. It is the epitome of working together. And after all, that has been DeKalb County's trademark. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, Chief.
And that's why we're here, partnership. Now, let me just see, uh, where's Bert? How are we doing on time? Okay, I, I, I uh, would like to bring up everybody, but I do want you to get a sense of how this came about and the strength of partnerships. And so uh, I want to ask our school board chairman, Tom Bowen, if he'll come bring uh, some brief remarks on behalf of the school system and the partnership that we continue to forge with the DeKalb County school system and DeKalb, between DeKalb County school system and DeKalb County government. We're working together and we're working as one. Uh, we are part of the same team, and then I uh, have a very special person who I want to bring forward. Mr. Chairman, Bowen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first, I want to thank CEO Ellis and all those who are responsible for bringing this program. I just want to address two, two points. One, the importance and magnitude of including teachers in this program. Uh, DeKalb County School System is the third largest in the state, approximately 27th largest in the country. We have about 7,000 teachers here who can avail themselves of this program. In a time where there is a teacher shortage, both in the state and nationally, this provides an extra incentive for us to attract and retain the best educators in DeKalb County School System. And so from, from the school system standpoint, we are always pleased to work with the county. Uh, CEO Ellis approached the entire school board within the first month or two of taking office and sat down with us and said, how can we work together? We've entered into a number of pilot uh, projects together, but nothing of this magnitude. And so I just want to thank you, CEO Ellis, for, for always reaching uh, across to other, not just uh, local entities such as the school board, I know you work with the uh, local delegation and members of the, of the uh, State House of Representatives and, and State Senate, but leadership is not doing what's convenient. Leadership is doing what's right for the community and right for everyone, and we've never had to come to you and ask for you to do what's right. You've always been willing to, to reach out and proactively do what's right. And so on behalf of the 7,000 teachers that have the opportunity to be good neighbors, along with our uh, first responders, we just want to thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate you being here. Again, we can't wait. We got to act now. And there's nothing like hearing a personal testimony. And so, uh, again, we're honored to be here at the home of Officer Bernadette Hooker. Thank you for allowing us to, to be here and to see a real life experience. And I want to ask you if you'll come forward right now and tell us about what that experience and what this program and the entire One to Cabs initiative has meant to you. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Come on forward. Well, to start off, I will say uh, um, home is where the heart is. I didn't know I was at home with so many prestigious people, <laughs> but it's you wonderful. Feel oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say what this means to me. When I adopted my son in 2009, I looked in his eyes and fell in love. That was my heart. My next step was, I'm going to buy him a home so he can live, he can have his own, he can play, front, backyard, and be safe. I can come home and have peace, go to sleep, get myself ready for the next day. I did so. So my testimony is, is wow. It's wow. Who better to work for you than someone who lays their head where their heart is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Home ownership is special. Uh, it is the American dream. And for the last few years, uh, we know that too many of our citizens have been frustrated because they've even either found it difficult to purchase a home or in many, too many tragic situations, they lost the homes that they had. But we're reversing that trend now. And we're starting right here at home with our hometown heroes, heroes like Officer Hooker. And so I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. I want to thank you for participating in this very special occasion. I want to thank you for the partnerships we have with institutions like Citizens Trust Bank and APD Solutions. I want to thank uh, you for the partnership that we enjoy with the Obama administration and thank Ed Jennings for being here. I want to thank uh, all of our private sector partners. I want to thank all of our governmental partners. I want to thank the school system. I want to thank, most of all, our first responders and our teachers. 
for giving back to the community. And now, how comforting is it to know that they will not only be giving back to the community, but they'll be living right here as our neighbors in the communities where they serve. So thank you all.